All right, well, the beginning really goes back to the uh, plastic track that we used to have in here. It was a tabletop track. It was something that we threw together when we first opened up the store. We felt like we really needed a, some sort of track in here for the customers, although our main focus was really just to sell uh, slot car parts. Yeah, the day after we set up the plastic track, I knew we needed a wood track. The track that we had in here was uh, as much as we could fit. It became problematic because the track was older and we started to have uh, electrical issues with trying to keep it running right. We tried lots of different things. We tried putting copper tape on it. We tried uh, conductive grease. It was just every time you came in, that was little tweaks and so forth that you had to do to the plastic track to get it to run just right. A lot of the issues that you come up with on plastic, we've uh, totally eliminated with wood. After having that track, the plastic track set up in the store for about a year, uh, I started to get pretty tired of it and became motivated to, to move in a different direction, which was to go ahead and design a wood track. Uh, I talked to Dave Wickham, talked to Mike first, told him that I, you know, that I wanted to go in that direction. He was, he was all on board with uh, you know, starting to move in that direction of designing a track. I sat down with Dave and I said, hey, let's throw together a couple designs. The first step was uh, trying to figure out how big we could make it. We had to make it look good as far as racing. It had to uh, be somewhat technical, but it also had to have straightaways and flow. Uh, Mike and Art, you know, uh, have different views. <laughs> so, you know, what, what Mike wanted was, you know, something that fit in the store and Art wanted something that was big. So, uh, I thought in a, in a, in a, in some respect, it was my job to fulfill both their needs in that regard. Dave did all the drawings and then um, he'd bop them back and forth off Art and myself and then, um, you know, see what kind of we could do in the space. I had a couple of key design criteria that I wanted to incorporate in the track. Um, one was that we wanted to do uh, wider lane spacing to accommodate 124 scale cars. And I also wanted to have a lot more length to the track than the tabletop track, which was affording us, which was only a little bit over 40 feet in length. We could fit a lot more track in the space that we have at the store by, build, by custom building a, a wood track. The biggest thing was it had to be big. It had to be as big as we could get in there and yet still support racers and people in there so you could move around. And it had to be four lanes. We wanted four lanes at least, if not more. The store is largely run by Mike. From that standpoint, that was kind of what was driving Dave and I in our design. With a, in the back of our mind, we still have to somehow fit it into the space and not impede too much on what, um, you know, what Mike had laid out in the store. I think generally speaking, we had 10 by 20 to work with. So the real challenge was, how do you make better use of the space? One of the biggest opportunities to get more space out of the track was to push the track up against the wall and then to have uh, an upper and lower level so that basically we've only got one pass of the track along the back, but we have an upper and lower level. It allowed us to get the track a little bit further over in the store and in order to do that, we set it up so that we have an opening down here where you can access the track to get into the middle here for marshalling. So we took a big oval track and kind of folded it in on itself. And, uh, and that allowed us to get to almost 80 feet in length. So I had all these design criteria. I had the angled piece, I had the driver station, they wanted the bank corner. Mm -hmm. um, even those three things were enough to give me pieces of a puzzle that I needed to put together. The first couple, three, four drawings, I would look at them and say, okay, we need to do this and that. And then somebody else would come back and say, you know, and I approved a couple of them. And then finally I just uh, gave up. I just said, you guys make the drawing and I'll do the work. And we, we did designs over and over and over again. We, it, the process went on for months with me and Dave trading back notes every now and then. And then finally we got to a point where it was like, okay, we've probably beat this to death. Are, are we gonna build a track or not? After we get the call from the CNC guy that everything was done, they went and picked it up, they brought it here, and then we started laying out, finding out what we had. We don't need these bolts yet, so we're not gonna do it. 
and then going by the drawings, kind of trying to lay it out. Yeah. I'd never done a freestanding track. I've always done table mounted tracks, and it was my first um, freestanding track. So I had a, I'd been thinking for um, quite a while how I was going to do things. The bolts will be in the way. No, because you're gonna lift it up. Okay. I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to visualize yeah. it, if it's gonna be an issue. We cut the recess in the braid before we assemble anything. Or before that's one of the first things we do. If we know the depth that we want the braid, the final product, we want the braid just slightly below the surface, so no, no cars or gears or can damage the braid. And then, so we already had that depth, and then we. We go and route all the pieces before we start assembling it. I use a tongue and groove um, system. I took two by material and then I, I overlapped it so it would go in tongue and groove and then I ran bolts through the center of it and then so there would be no bolts going through the uh, track surface, but yet it would hold it together very tightly. Get sure where you want. Then I start putting the sides on. Yeah. Make sure you put it out. Here's a little block. Here's a black. No, oh, you're right there. Okay. okay, push that in. You got it? Yeah. Yep. Then we painted the track. The track surface is uh, a Sherwin-Williams product that we used uh, a semi-gloss um, latex enamel. It, it gives you real good adhesion, uh, great durability, and, um, and it looks decent at the same time. And then when we, I went to lay braid down, it's already got a painted surface. I buy pre-taped um, braid double back tape on it and you just pull a uh, paper backing off it and you're able to lay the braid in the groove it makes it a whole lot easier as opposed to putting tape down and then coming back and laying braid on top of it once we get the braid laid then we come back with a braid roller which lays it perfectly flat and that's one of the main things you want is a flat braid. You don't want any undulations in that. I think it took us about a month once we got the wood in the shop to go from bare MDF to a working track. The track at that point was essentially done and ready to be moved in. So uh, the track was disassembled, put into pieces, put in the back of his truck. We actually found someone who wanted the original tabletop plastic track we let him know we were ready to pull that track out and deliver it to his house and move the new track in. We spent uh, half a day tearing down the old plastic track and putting it in boxes. We had to take it apart in pieces and, and it was a four lane track and we had to take it apart so that the guy that was buying it could reassemble it. And then we moved these pieces in and started uh, you know, putting it up and putting it into place. The track went in uh, relatively easily, uh, setting it level and even, that took some time. Uh, since this track is a, a self-supporting track as opposed to a um, tabletop track, I had to build legs into it and I made them all adjustable between 18 to 24 inches so I could can adjust the legs accordingly. I was still very concerned that, um, that I'd you know, kind of gone overboard with it because it, it's a shoe shoehorn fit into this little space here. But when I saw it in here, it really, really was what I had envisioned we were building. 
and I was very excited about it. Mike and Dave said, did such a fantastic job on just on all the details and the way it looked and the orange paint and the, the gray driving. So it just really popped in my mind. I was totally ecstatic. When I was done with it, I was, I'm kind of proud of it. You know, it, it looks good, it runs good, and it's, it exceeded expectations.